What's up guys, it's Rory here from Project Zero Racing. Uh, I'm back. Um, I'm sure you all saw the video that I put up uh, last Sunday. Um, yeah, we're here. The car is here as well. Uh, I've got to apologise really for, for not being, well, for not posting anything really for 12 months. Um, as you're all aware, COVID and stuff like that, and uh, I've had a few family bits going on in the background. and. Um, yeah, I've kind of lost the rhythm for everything and um, just just started to grind hard and work hard and um, yeah, <laughs> what can I say, you know, it's life at the end of the day but um, yeah, I wanted to update you guys on exactly what's going on um, with the channel and what's going on with the car and stuff like that. So, um, last 12 months we have been working on the car still, we've done quite a lot. Uh, but like I say, work's just been mental and um, and you know we've been concentrating on some projects at work and uh, one of them is here, which is Dave's Puma, and then we've got the Fiesta as well, which is all stuff that you hopefully come to the channel at some point, uh, so I can show you exactly what we've been doing. But uh, today is pretty much just going to be about what's been going on with the pink car, uh, the hopeful time attack car that was not actually racing time attack yet. But fingers crossed, you know we're nearing the end of 2020 now. Um, I know my main aim was to get to 2019, never happened this year, never happened because of COVID and stuff. So we're looking at the 2021 season now. Um, and I've been talking with some guys about doing some other stuff with the car as well. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so let's show you around the car exactly what's been going on um, and show you a few little bits and bobs that we've been uh, we've been putting on it. So here she is in all the pinkness. Um, I don't know if the camera's actually picking up the pink today. I think it actually might be. So sort of, kind of an orange and a pink as well. but. Um, yeah, it's really hard to get the colour of this car until you see it in person. It's a bit of a bit of a bonkers colour, but um, we'll start for the front and work our way back, I suppose. So, um, as you'll notice, there's no more pink bonnet on the front. Um, I think you've all saw it last time, but currently got the um, carbon fibre bonnet on the front now. Uh, so there's two bargains currently on this car, which I'll show you. It's your carbon fibre, but yeah, we've got the um, full carbon fibre bonnet going on now. Weighs sort of around the five kilo mark, so we've dropped quite a lot of weight off the, the front end. Um, it's just the, the heaviest part of the car currently, they can't physically get rid of any more weight off the front of there unless you're going like carbon fibre front end and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we've um, got carbon fibre bonnet on there. Um, we're going to the engine bay quickly, so we quick nose in there. So uh, oh, look at the piece of wood. Um, got the Kevlar cam belt on there now. Uh, we had a few little issues with the head, um, nothing to do with anything our side of development and stuff, more to do with a certain sort of put it together, but we won't, we won't go into that for now, uh, but that's all back and good. Uh, we've upgraded to upgraded to ARP headset on this now, uh, it's ARP headset and an Athena WRC head gasket. See how we get on with them, mixed reviews with the with the, um, the head gaskets, but um, you know, worst comes to worst, head's got to come back off again and we'll, we'll put a different gasket on there, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there in the future. Um, all the full wiring harness and engine bay harnesses, it's both the exterior engine bay harness which is the fuse box and around the back, that's all been wrapped in um, in some motorsports tester stuff, I've basically stripped the whole loom back, got rid of everything we don't need on the car and um, in terms of wiring and, and reroutes and wires and stuff we've got a couple of extra extra things that have gone into the wiring harness now so we, um, we wanted to sort of tidy that all away so it was part of the actual harness. Um, but yeah, that's all, all done, and then obviously the engine harness is already done as well, all the injector loom and coil pack loom and um, accessory looms that go on there as well. And then you'll notice there's two lovely new fuel lines here now. Uh, we've, um, we've done some stuff with uh, some of the Funk Motorsport uh, heat shrouding stuff that we've got on here now. We've got a bit more to go down the back for when the new manifold and stuff goes on, the new turbo. Um, but we're full A and 8 from the fuel pump all the way to the, the, the fuel rail and back again on the return. Uh, we've got the new radium direct mount fuel pressure regulator on there as well. Um, bolts onto our, one of our own custom fuel lines that we've got, uh, sorry, fuel rails that we've got on there as well. So that can literally bolt straight onto that and then you can run your, uh, run your return back straight to, uh, to, your, uh, to your tank. Uh, been setting up ready for the turbo to go on. We've got some, um, basically what we're going to do with all of the vacuum lines on the car is everything's got an AN line. Uh, we've got the AM feed there for the direct mount fuel pressure regulator, so that's all AM fed. All the brake booster lines are AM fed now as well, fuel lines, etc. etc. Um, but yeah, we've we've just getting everything sort of set up and ready. Uh, obviously, I can't run the lines for the vacuum lines yet until we have the actual turbo and stuff fitted on. Um, just down, it's a bit of a hard one to see. So if I can get you in the engine, there we go, just down there, is 
the transponder. So the car runs got one of the um, AMB transponder kits on it. Um, so that's ran off a switch in the um, inside the car, as shown a bit. You basically use that for the lap tires. Don't have to um, remove that or anything. That's on a hard wire, a fused hard wire on there. Uh, all of the lines are now ran for. So the, the electrics are run for the the spout bushes fan as well. That's all set up on the pro alloy uh, radiator. That all runs pretty much whenever we want it to. Um, I've got that just on a on a relay switch um, just to pretty much keep the car cool whenever we want it to. I mean, Obviously when we get back into the pits and you've got the engine turned off and you still want to be cooling the car down, then you can have the fan on at the same time. And then after a massive mess about, we finally got the um, braided brake lines. Uh, so the whole car is ran through uh, braided brake lines now from the ABS module all the way back to obviously the calipers. Um, we've got the two rears that run straight through into the car, through the car, direct to the rear calipers and then obviously the front ones which tee off from the ABS module now down through obviously the bulkheads and stuff down into where the calipers are. Uh, saying that as well, we've also got the uh, braided clutch line as well. Uh, helped a little bit better with the pedal feel on this car actually, but I noticed that straight away. Uh, pedal feels a lot better. Um, it's probably the only thing that's bled up on this car currently is the clutch because we wanted to test that. Um, and obviously make sure all the gears and stuff are working. Uh, car still hasn't been ran up yet. Obviously we're waiting to finish the manifold and the exhaust and stuff off, but that's pretty much the last piece of the puzzle. There's only another two or three pieces after that when I can really run the car up and get it running, which is the oil breather, which we're sorting with Matt at the minute, and the oil cooler, same again, we're sorting that with Matt as well. Um, but yeah, for the, as for the engine bay, that's pretty much um, pretty much that all sorted out. So um, what we'll do is we'll go onto the inside of the car now and, um, and show you exactly what's been going on in there. So the first thing you'll probably notice when we open the door is the lovely flocked motorsports dash now. Um, that's all in, it's on four quick releases, it's super easy to pull in and out. Um, yeah, just wanted to try and keep the car a little bit neutral on the inside and obviously um, a bit of dash flare as it's called. We have the sun beaming off the dash, can be quite bright in these cars so we've um, we flopped that up. Try to keep the dash as neutral as we can really but you know I've, I've got to add some pinkness in there somewhere. Uh, we've had all of the... Um, all of the clocks are redone as well. So sh shout out to SJ Conversion. Sean did my conversion way back in the day when I was still messing around with this car and it was on the road. Uh, but we've got some um, some pink LEDs for the centre screen. You don't really use that's in for Marley and stuff. It's just add to effect. And then the actual rear screen for all the lights and stuff, which you won't be able to see now because it's quite sunny, is all. Um, all a bright LED white, so um, yeah, you should be able to see them pretty well on a sunnyish day. When you start the car, if you need to, obviously night time as well. Um, as you've probably all seen, Time Attack this year are doing another night attack, which will um, unfortunately we won't be in, but it will um, serve something to look at in the future, I suppose. And then I'm going to try and get in the car to um, to show you exactly what else has been been going on. I'm back into Madeline McCann's climbing frame. Oh god, I've been on a run this morning, so. I'm I had a bit of pain, but um, yeah, okay, so uh, the rest of the inside of the car, then we'll close the door so we can actually hear what's going on. So, inside the car now then, uh, we have upgraded slightly, we've got one of the CarTech XR battery isolators now, it's a solid state battery isolator, rather than running on a pull switch, we run them on an actual electronic switch, so, uh, new dash centre, uh, usually in the focus, this is where... The radio sits, but uh, we don't need a radio where we're going. So um, yeah, so I'll just talk you through quickly exactly what what's going on here. It's quite simple, really is. Uh, no, I'm not a trans. Um, nothing against trans people either, but that's for the transponder, surprisingly. Um, so we start at the bottom, uh, top, and work our way down to the bottom. Uh, what we got here is the kill switch. So this runs the CarTech battery isolator. This basically. When you the when the lights off, it just disconnects the whole battery from from the circuit. Battery and alternator does disconnect from the circuit, so obviously there's no negative. Then the car cannot run, and all the electronics um, the electronics are turned off. Uh, what this also does is sends a power signal to the ECU to shut down before it kills the whole car, so you don't have a big uh, voltage spike from the alternator and stuff like that as well. So it discharges the alternator, tells the ECU to switch off, and then um, and then kills the whole car. So literally, we've got this button here, which is obviously for main stuff inside, and there is one in the engine bay as well for marshals and stuff to get to if they need to when there's something going on on the outside of the car. But we'll turn that on now. So as you notice, the dash comes on, all the relays and stuff start doing a clicky thing in, the, in there as well. Um, 
And then what we've got then is the ignition and start. So on this car, it's uh, you press once for ignition and then put the clutch in and press again and hold to start the car. Um, I'm not going to try and do that now. The hot starter is hooked up, but as you'll notice, there is noises going on and some bits going on in the screen. Car's currently a little bit unhappy still because of um, things not being hooked up. Bloody hell, am I on 66,000? Jesus. Christ, oh, I've got no fuel, boys. Oh, it's definitely not four o'clock either. <laughs> it's, it's probably about 10 degrees, though. It's it's a little bit warmer today, and we're getting close to winter now. So, yeah, that happens when you turn the ignition on, and then three times off, it turns it off. Um, right, next three, then. Pretty simple one. Fuel is for the fuel pump, which you'll hear now. So, that's the fuel pump. Uh, I'll show that in a minute. That's a new AAM 400 LPH external fuel pump from... Our new fuel setup because I have overcomplicated things again. Um, the fan setup, which you might just be able to hear, that's in the obviously the spiral fan in the engine bay, which pretty much just runs that on max. Uh, and then the trans, which is for the transponder, which I showed you earlier, um, in the engine bay, uh, that's one there as well. So uh, going down again, then we'll just show you quickly the rain light. Obviously, for the time tap rain light, it keeps it on, and then you can have that on constant or or flashing for wets and stuff like that. Uh, when it's on the centre set in there, when you put the main beams on, it um, turns the light off on the rear. So when you're on your fast lap, you pull your looking high beam so everyone can see that you're on your fast lap, and it turns your cool down lap light off on the back. Um, and then obviously bottom left hand corner ECU, so that's a direct plug straight to the ECU, so you can run your data logs, check it, and then obviously when you're mapping the car or whatever from the inside, you can see exactly what's going on uh, through your laptop. But um, literally. Uh, I'm not actually physically put this in yet. It is just on a just pressured in there at the minute. You'll notice back here a little bit more carbon fibre. I've actually uh, over the last seven eight months started working not only just at Matt's but at a, another motorsports company, um, and I've been learning some new skills. So I wanted to try and implement some of those skills into this car. So uh, one of those skills has been wiring, uh, which <laughs> I absolutely despise, but. Uh, you know, I wanted to try and make the car a little bit better, which we have managed to. Uh, so all of these switches here run off uh, alive, and the live goes to a relay, and the relay actually runs the power to to whatever you need to run it to, uh, which is what we've done there. It saves messing around and wires getting hot and stuff, especially when you're running over 30 amps. So uh, yeah, that's all done. Um, and then obviously you'll you'll probably notice oh, there's a pink steering wheel hook, and then we've got some uh, well carbon fibre. So uh, let's go outside and we'll show you the uh, show you the roof. Also, quickly, just want to give a big shout out to to Mick Siddle at Bespoke. Um, he's actually sent me two of these. He sent me a slightly thinner one as well, and then obviously this nice thick knob because everyone loves a good thick knob. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a 3D printed um, 3D printed gear knob, which is absolutely awesome. And obviously, it's in the vivid pink as well. And then he's done us a steering wheel hook, and I've I, I've just put the steering wheel on on the seat. And I should have been using the steering wheel hook, but yeah, that's up there as well. Um, yeah, spot on Mick, really appreciate it, bro. Okay, so um, going off of like the uh, CarTech XR quick disconnect, there is obviously our uh, new uh, battery as well. It's a dry cell battery, it's actually a motorbike, I think the motorbike batteries is for Odyssey Extreme. Uh, I remember it's the PC680, I think. She's just enough cold cranking amps to start this engine. Uh, ideally, you want to run this on a trickle charger when you're not using it. Uh, currently, at the minute, we've not tried starting the car or anything, so that's still at pretty much its um, its capacity. It needs to be at. Um, and then there's the, the brake lines that run through the car from the bulkhead. Uh, we have tied up a bit of the fuse boxes and stuff and all the wire and stuff on the engine uh, behind the dash as well, uh, but you won't ever see that. It's all tucked up nicely out of the way. Um, that was probably quite a lot of fun, which is a, a positive pass through. So obviously you, you, you've got to isolate the power going through there to make sure it doesn't arc out on the on the body, but they're, they're spot on. They're a little bit expensive, but they work really well. Uh, obviously you have to pass all the power through to the starter motor and the fuse box and the engine bay. That's all done. Spot on. So then obviously the next big piece that's happened to the car is full carbon fiber roof. Um, this thing is absolutely bonkers. Standard roof's about 20 kilos, which you wouldn't think it actually weighs that much, but it does. Uh, this thing, however, only weighs 
five kilos. So we've saved 15 kilos off the top of the roof line. So if you imagine all of that weight that's on the top of the car now has disappeared. So we're lowering the center of the gravity and within the car. Um, same again, helps with um, helps with the way that car handles um, and uh, I can go into some other stuff with that but to be honest with you I really can't be, can't be bothered to, to talk through that now but yeah so that's a massive thing that's all bonded on and riveted on at the minute to, uh, to make sure it's got a good seal we'll probably pull the rivets out at some point and put the gutter rails back in uh, specifically on the front as well because we've got to put the windscreen in yet still not got a new windscreen just me being me I uh, wanted to make sure everything was done inside the car before I got the windscreen on but yeah that's all ready so we can put a new windscreen on there now if it needs to be uh, coming around to the back of the car then, we've gone for a new set of rear discs and pads, uh, finally. Uh, and obviously the one thing I'm not showing you all yet, which is the, the new wheels. We have new wheels, we're running a 18x9 ET35 uh, Team Dynamic 1.2 race, which are my favourite wheels in the world. Uh, and some nice little custom bits on them as well. Centre caps have got to come off yet because they'll definitely melt off, they're really common for it. They're wrapped currently in a set of the BTCC slicks, which is the Dunlop Sport Max. Uh, I think these ran last season or season before, I think. But um, yeah, they're spot on. Uh, like I was saying, the new uh, new discs and pads, uh, which we've got the Matlos Motorsport custom discs and um, a set of Ferrado DS 2500 pads in there as well. Uh, we've upped the tyre size then obviously to match the, the new rims as well. These are on a 265 uh, 660 18, which I think equates to a 265 45 18 or something along those lines. Uh, they're a little bit too wide. Ideally, I'd want to run a 255 uh, when we move over to the Trofeo Rs, but we'll see what price they're rocking out at the time when we want to when we want to buy a set. And then coming around into the rear of the car now. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, so I've not shown you guys this yet, but um, yeah, this turned up last week. A little bit of a, a care package from Matthew. Uh, this is the new turbo. I'll put it down here. So this is the new uh, G30 series by Garrett, it's a G3770 um, with a 0.83 exhaust housing and a 0.72 intake housing on it. These things run, or supposedly run, what, what the, the, the last digit is on the, on the, basically on the serial, which is a G3770, meaning it's wheel max at 770 brake horsepower. Not that we're ever going to use that, it's nice to know we've got it there. Uh, the reason we've gone with this turbo is the efficiency rating on these things is nuts. Um, and hopefully we should be spooling this pretty well. It's pretty much matched to a Garrett GT 3076 or the GTX Gen 2s. Um, this is the next one up in the series now, but um, yeah, this is the new turbo that's going to be going on. It's all V-banded and everything, so uh, it makes life a lot easier when you want to put it on and take it off. Um, comes with all the uh, all the fittings as well, which is nice. Comes with all the V-bands, comes with the AN6 feed and return for the, the coolant. Uh, only comes with an AM4 feed for the top. For the oil, which is there, that's got a restrictor in it anyway, uh, and then obviously we've got to put drain plug and stuff on there. But um, yeah, that's the new turbo, and then sat below the new blowy boy is I can put this back in the box the new fuel tank. So, um, some of you be like, Well, it's a bit small, isn't it, Rory? Well, it's not about the size, it's about what you can do with it, and surprisingly. 27 and a half litres is plenty for a 20 minute session, supposedly. Um, but we'll find out soon enough. That is obviously been cut to fit. So my lovely Raptor X got trashed. <laughs> so we've had to cut through there. Uh, that sits on top of the rear subframe now. And we'll come into the rest of the suspension stuff in a minute. I just want to show you the rest of the stuff in the car. But um, yeah, that sits on top of the rear subframe. And just there is the new fuel pump, which is a AEM. 400 LPH in external pump, that's all run on the relays, AN8 feed, AN8 return to that tank, so uh, yeah, that's the new fuel system. We're probably going to have two side tanks put onto this as well. Um, not that we need the fuel, but I'd, there's some other stuff that I want to do with the car, which may in turn require a little bit more fuel, but um, we'll, we'll find out next year when, when we start testing and stuff like that. Obviously you'll notice there's two big massive holes in currently in the rear wheel wells. Um, so we've upgraded to the KW V4 Motorsport coilovers now. Uh, these are a true coilover on the rear, which is why you probably saw the rear lower arms have disappeared and become pink. Um, we've upgraded from the Club Sports to these, got a really good deal on them. Um, so they're on the car. Um, 
the little bit of chopping and stuff to make them fit, but we got there. They're all solid top mounts and stuff now as well, so we've, we've got rid of the OEM Ford rubbish crap blooming top mounts. But um, yeah, we'll go into the car now and show you exactly what we've done under there. So under the car, you'll notice there's a lot more pink that's going on down here now. Uh, we have obviously, because we've got the coilovers now, we can get rid of the stock OEM Ford lower arms now. These usually run a cup between the top and the lower arm, um, and basically run your spring in there and then run your shock off the top over the side there. But now we've got rid of that, we've moved over to solid rose jointed tubular lower arms, controller, uh, toe arms and camber arms as well. Uh, obviously with rose joints there's a lot more adjustability, uh, solid joints so there's no slack in bushes and stuff so pretty much what you set the suspension at is where it stays at. Um, so yeah that's all done, powder coated, big thanks to Powder Labs down in Essex Way, they've hooked us up massively and sorted. Um, sort of the powder cone out on this to try and get the brightest stuff as well. They've, they've got a few more bits of ours that they're going to they're going to sort out as well, uh, which will probably be in one of the upcoming videos, which you'll see. Um, and I'll probably get absolutely slated for it, but stuff it, shit happens. My car, my rules. Um, so yeah, that's both sides. They're all done, dusted. Um, so yeah, pretty much that is what we've been up to on the car. Um, might not look like an awful lot, but there's been some serious time and effort put into this. Um, obviously, when you're working six, seven days a week, which I am at the minute, um, it is kind of hard to get time to, to push effort onto your own project. Um, which is why, really, guys, there's not been any videos for the last 12 months. If I'm really honest with you, I fell out of love and I just, just wanted to work and, and get through stuff. But yeah, we're back now. Uh, new laptop and stuff to, to edit these videos and obviously the camera which I've still got anyway so yeah we're back on with this fingers crossed now within the next two months so we're in October now November December we'll get it down have the exhaust on have the manifold finished off get the car back here get the oil uh, cooler kit on it oil breather kit on it and then we're looking at first start up running in and then it's basic stuff then it's take, taking it to other people to get stuff done so mapping which is a big one um, I've got the kind of idea of who I want to do that. Uh, we'll find out exactly who's going to be doing it close towards the time because it's all about availability and stuff like that. Um, and then corner weighting, which is a big one, alignment and corner weighting. We don't actually know what the car weighs at the minute, uh, which would be a really interesting point to see considering how much weight we've took out of the car. Uh, I'd like to see what the balance is now. I'd also like to know exactly what it weighs, but um, we'll find out soon enough. And. Um, and then yeah, it's it's testing, which is nuts. You think about it, with three years down the line, three years in September it was, three years down the line of taking this car off the road, stripping it down to bare metal, stitch welding all the seams up on it, doing all the Raptor, painting the car, and then and then building it back up again and getting to where we are now. But yeah, we're getting there, guys. Uh, like I say, I apologise for for the lack of the content, but. You know what it's like when you fall out of love with something, you just don't have the effort for it, but I'm trying trying so hard to put some more effort back into it again, because it is, it is my pride and joy, and it is a beautiful car. But I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you want to see on the car, what content you want to see coming out. Obviously, we've got a lot coming up now towards the end of the year. We slow down at work, so we can put a little bit more effort into the car. But um, yeah, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, so you can see exactly what's going to go on with this car. And hopefully, fingers crossed soon, we'll be testing. Take it easy guys, dropping out.